Okay, good morning. I think we can slowly begin. Uh, I think something is wrong with the lightning. Uh, ah, much liked. Much better, much better, much better. Then also, let's turn this thing on. Oh, it's so bright. Nice, nice, nice. So... Today we will be building. We will be building and rebuilding because I got this. Uh, this is a frame designed by one of our colleagues, one of the regular viewers of this channel and my patron, by the way. This is designed by the Rotor Simo. It's a three inch frame that is actually one piece frame. <laughs> because the top plate and the bottom plate are exactly the same element, only flipped 180 degrees. And everything is held together with the uh, six uh, standoffs. I still have no idea how I'm going to build this thing. I still have no idea which exactly components I'm going to put over here. And I still have no idea if this will be half pusher, half puller configuration. Because if you look carefully, uh, you see that this... This can be front, this can be back, doesn't really matter. It can fly like this, it can fly like this, whatever. And uh, you know what? It might be interesting to build this thing as the top normal configuration. Front uh, pusher and the camera, something like that. That might be interesting thing to see. There is one actually problem. Uh, the Vista and the flight controller holes are slightly too close to each other. I'm not sure if I'm gonna, if I will be able to fit the Vista over there. Uh, but still, I even have not decided yet if this thing will go as the uh, analog or the DJI because I still have no idea. Um, so this is another decision that we will have to make. Uh, uh, make today. Oh, Bandita, almost Berlin. <laughs> so two more hours and you are in Poland probably. Anyhow, uh, we have some questions in the chat, so let's maybe answer them before we will proceed. Uh, TDI, what's the best six inch frame in 2023? Relatively durable. Uh, skip six, six inches. Uh, six inch is too close to actually five inch. If you are looking for something bigger than the five inch, that means you want to have slightly more efficiency, maybe slightly longer flight time, slightly maybe longer uh, pull and uh, hang time <laughs> and, and just trust to do some ama amazing uh, vertical maneuvers and if you ask me six inches as actually almost like the five inches only only worse so um, forget about six inch quad go to seven inch you will be happy speaks the guy that already tried once and six inches and was not really super happy with the results so just go with uh, seven that's my that's my consumer advice anyhow terry fritz uh sleep until 4 a.m because uh tasmania tasmania i think tasmania new zealand uh, this this kind of the of the region uh terry fritz is from there so they have a early 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 morning and we have uh, uh, average evening um but the weather weather is abysmal weather one more time this part of europe is abysmal so um so that's that um let me turn on the top camera let's take a look at the quad from the top that might take a while mark you why don't you uh, okay now now we are golden now we are almost golden let's see what's on the top so this is the frame uh, this is the frame it's designed basically to work with the three inch propellers uh here we can compare this thing with the uh, different three incher basically the same layout uh, maybe differs here and there and first decision we have to make how we gonna build it this side front or this side back because like i said we can build it however we want this doesn't really make any sense uh, i think it will look cool I had one, no, I had once the hexa, not not even the quad, but the hexa, that had the front arms uh, elevated, and that was unfortunately creating some unexpected. So we're gonna go like this. Mm, the 
slightly more traditional. This will be the front, so lower arms will be on the front. This will be the back, and uh, later we're gonna decide if we will go with the analog and the digital, or the digital, because, like, who knows? Let me find some motors. Okay. Front puller. Yeah, exactly, front puller. Uh, motors, motors. I don't think I have a much choice of the small motors. So, if not wanting to dismantle this thing, I think we will be stuck with those. Uh, Toka 1505. <laughs> That's a big motor for the 3 inch uh, propeller. Uh, 3000 kV. Mm, I had this thing running on the 4 inch props, so not sure if this is slightly not too low kV. On the other hand, this thing is 3000. Ah, kind of similar. Kind of similar, so should be should be fine. So those motors should be actually okay for this. The setup. So uh, this will go slightly like this. I wonder if some of the wires are not longer than the other wires. Would be. Yeah. I don't want to elongate the wires. I always hate it because it always bites me in the in the face because usually something is done wrong. By the way, I know what uh, is wrong with this uh, flight controller I smoked when I was assembling the Atomers Penguin. I know what happened because I sent this to, to a guy uh, from Poland. He said, I want to figure out what's wrong with this uh, flight controller. So he did. And uh, yeah, it was 100% my fault. Well, Okay, not really 100% my fault. The um, the solder used to solder everything originally was kind of... I'm not sure how to say it in English. Let's say that uh, during heating up, uh, the solder was uh, exploding some almost invisible solder blobs. And some of those blobs just hit the 5 volt rail, destroyed the LDO, destroyed the um, MCU. So the flight controller is actually no go to anything, uh, most probably beyond repair. I mean, it's possible to replace the LDO, it's possible to replace the uh, MCU, but then I'm not sure if this really makes sense to... To, to do it because then it would be bloody expensive to do it. What's the weight of the frame? Um, that's actually a good question because I have no idea yet. Uh, let me maybe remove all the standoffs and then we will uh, measure. By the way, uh, this is three millimeter thick, uh, thick carbon. And if you think that such a, such a build is cheaper than the standard one, no, it's not. It's much more expensive because you basically have two relatively big uh, three millimeters uh, thick uh, elements and uh, there's a lot of just wasted material here and there. So uh, this is even 50% more expensive than a uh, traditional frame. So, but the whole frame is basically two elements, two 100% identical elements. You just flip them, them however you want and you're golden. What's the weight? Okay. Single plate is 18 grams, so 18 grams plus standoffs, uh, plus the screws for the standoffs. And as the result, we have 40, 45 grams. I would have to say it's kind of heavy for the three incher. Absolutely kind of heavy for the three incher. But uh, most probably, really, the weight was not really the main aspect of it. And with this design, it's really like hard to have thicker arms and uh, thinner uh, plates because, well, those are just two pieces of carbon like put together. Concept is nice. Uh, it's not the oh, it's not the first one. There are designs like this uh, from years ago uh, that you, I think, Gap RC had something years ago. 
So that's that. And uh, and that's that. Um, okay, let me then... Because there's another decision we have to make. We have to make a decision on the flight controller. Um, I can go with the SpeedyB F405. The, the stack that just appeared. But it looks so pretty and unsoldered and so virgin. Or I could just reuse the stack I had previously. Which will be something from Mamba and the Matek. And I really wonder which one to choose. How do you think? Which stack should I use? Because I don't know yet. I have not decided on which stack would be better. Um, hmm. Let, let's maybe make a poll. So... So, community. Now it's up to you to give the answer, because we can go with this or we can go uh, uh, with this. 3 inch, 3D quad, okay, interesting, interesting, why not? Okay, I see people are in favor of the SpeedyB. There is still a problem, I'm not sure if I will be actually able to use the SpeedyB. Because there is really very, very little space between the place for Vista and place for flight controller. And this would kind of require so creative space management. We can always go analog. This is also a possibility that we just skip the digital part and just go analog hmm. you know what hmm. like that or like that if this thing had like five millimeters more uh, between two stacks then okay so Probably I will not be able to go with this PDB because both the flight controller and the ESC has this protrusion over here and this is just taking space. So I don't think we will be able to actually make it. Uh, yeah, it's it's one piece, but twice. <laughs> <laughs> Those are two identical pieces. All in one, I don't think I have any all in one 20 by 20. I have all in ones 25, 26 by 26, but this is not really the case over here. So I think I can make this thing fit. I think I will be able to make this thing fit like this and then be able to fit the Vista over here. Hmm. I think think it should work. Let me find some screws. Damn, I could have asked Rotor Simo to make it slightly longer. <laughs> but I didn't. And like always, my fault. Thank you very much, Peter, for your 400 Hungarian forints. I have no idea if uh, the 3D is the option. Mostly because I have no 3D, 3D propellers, 3-inch propellers. Okay, let's say like this. Let's say... Uh, no, I don't have the render of such a configuration. So this would have to go like this. Okay. Hmm. 
Yeah. I think we will have to go analog with this thing. I don't remember when I had it for the last time, the analog quad. But I think uh, we have no choice but to go analog. Because I still need four millimeters, roughly four millimeters. Let's say five millimeters from the whole center. Or maybe no. If I would, maybe not. Mm -hmm, because that means if I could solder the wires for the rear motors vertically and here be a very creative boy what's the whole what's the spacing between uh, here we have 26 and a half and here we have a, yeah a challenge yeah 26 millimeters versus 25 millimeters so no uh looks like there will be a problem with putting the front camera yeah i think i think we will have to go analog after all because I don't think I will be able to install the analog camera. Ah, on the other hand, I'm on the wrong side because here we have front. So that's all also a change. But then if this thing goes like this and then this thing goes on top like this It'll work why don't you okay this thing goes like that then i should have enough space to install the camera on the outside hmm this idea might actually work this idea might actually work. I have to find a propeller. Then propeller goes like this. And then... this goes like this and this goes like this okay and that means between the propeller tips i have something like 30 millimeters i can install the camera like this uh, in front of this uh, some kind of the 3d printed protrusion okay slowly I don't want to install the Vista on the top because that doesn't make much sense uh, as well. But we already know that the Vista starts like six millimeters. Okay, so it's like six millimeters after all. But okay, I should still have approximately six millimeters here. Yeah, tight fit, but it's a fit. Vista will fit in the back. So the decision has been made. Uh, we will go with Vista. We will go with this stack. I will have to make some adjustments on the on the topic of the wires, uh, but uh, I think it's a feasible idea after all. We still have to check about the motors because the rear motors will go like this. Okay, maybe zoom out. Go like this and then we will still have enough of the space to 
connect the motors. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, I think it's time to start assembling this thing because looks like all the, the executive decisions have been already made. So it will work. It will be a really tight fit, but it will absolutely work. Uh, let me zoom out. Okay, let me zoom out and let's find the correct length of the screws for the motors. I think this one should be should be fine. Okay, so we need uh, so we need five millimeters M2 screws to install the motors. Let's find some. I should have plenty. Let's find some. I already lost one. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Okay, fantastic, outstanding. So, uh, one more time, those will be rear motors, those will be front motors. I think we can start installing the motors on the arms. Oh, Mosca, it's you. Another problem? Fuck, I don't want to see another problem over here. No, maybe not a problem, just maybe slightly a challenge. By the way, um, INAF 7 is going to be amazing. I The last two, three weeks were super interesting in terms of the new features that were proposed to the repository. So I have a very strong feeling that the INAF 7 will be a really super amazing release with a lot of interesting features. Even if some of those features that I know that might appear will not appear. Even then, it will be just fantastic. By the way, Mosca, I'm under great impression how active you are recently in terms of the development. That's that's some quality content. <laughs> or quantity content. Depends how to, how to look at it. By the way, uh, I was supposed to get the DJI... Uh, uh, Osmo Action 4 today, but the package took quite long to travel from like a thousand kilometers. It's Thursday already, so unfortunately I have not received the package yet. So probably tomorrow I will get this camera and I really wonder how good it is for the for the FPV usage. Because GoPros, I honestly I have something like a, I'm kind of disappointed with the GoPros recently, but that's quality of life. <laughs> Break a leg FPV? No, it's one piece. The frame is one piece, duplicated. Yeah, the frame is one piece. Yeah, you know a clickbait. I you have to. If you want to be successful on the YouTubes, you have to put a clickbait from time to time because uh, no clickbait, no clicks, and uh, you're in trouble. Still, there is a clickbait and there is a clickbait. And if the clickbait is just an interesting way of naming your video, then maybe just it's not really a clickbait. Because after all, it's about one piece, right? <laughs> I never watched this anime. I don't know why. I. I never watched them. It was a very long time since the last time I watched any anime, but that's a completely different story. So let's not maybe talk about the One Piece. And I'm definitely not gonna watch the One Piece by Netflix. Netflix recently, let's be honest, sucks. Okay, who have seen my electric bicycle uh, short uh, I posted some time ago? Hands up, uh, because I think I'm ready with the round two, this time with the beefier motor. Today I 
printed the mount, new mount for the motor. Uh, motor is kind of beefy, so hopefully it will uh, survive the treatment from this beefy motor. You see, 4250, but it's a stat rotor uh, dimensions, not the stator dimensions. S still, it's kind of like, you know, you, you know, you see, you feel that this is a beefy motor that should hopefully can have of the, of the torque. So that took me better part of the day to print. And I think it should be fine. Not a chance. It, it's not even flexing when I'm trying to moving so... Uh, Dan, propeller bicycle had a problem of being operational only for like five minutes, maybe not even five minutes, let's say 90 seconds before this thing overheated and, uh, and well, overheated and smoked the ESC. So I hope the second iteration will be much nicer on that, uh, on that aspect. I have a new motor, I, ha I still don't have a propeller. Uh, Mark Hoffman uh, suggested I got the Air Master screw, something like that. Uh, but I forgot. I have only 12 inch uh, APC props, uh, but they have a smaller hub diameter. So most probably I will have to make the hub slightly bigger by putting this thing, by, just by using this. Uh, electric drill, table drill to, to make the hole slightly bigger. And I hope that uh, it will not weaken the hub uh, so that everything will explode uh, during uh, using this thing. Let's hope not, but you know, you know how it is from time to time. So, okay, uh, rear motors, rear motors should be fine. Now it's time for the front motors. And I will also have to make a decision about length of those screws that will hold the stack. I think I will have to use the longer ones. Yeah, definitely I will have to use longer ones. And also I will have to try to find the grommets for the stack. Two M2 grommets. Because I don't think I have any. And uh, now I have some metal screws, probably not the best way to go, um, but who knows. We will see. We will improvise. And my favorite saying recently is that it will be fine. It will be fine. At work I have the reputation of the grumpy Pavel, so recently I'm trying to fight my reputation of the grumpy Pavo and be optimistic with the only a slightly pessimistic twist. It will be fine. Uh, <laughs> done two motors instead of one. Yeah, I was thinking about something like that. Um, actually, I was thinking about putting two uh, motors one above each other to make it slightly more compact. Uh, but then um, I thought to myself, well, this will be double scary. <laughs> this thing is already scary as shit with only one propeller and putting two propellers. Oh, oh man. But I bet it would be much, much faster, I think. Probably also would be better if I kind of lost like 20 kilos and weighed like, I don't know, 65 instead of 88. I still lost like seven kilos already uh, this year, so it's not that bad. Um, however, I replaced quite a lot of uh, fat with uh, muscles, especially on the in the legs area, uh, because I'm cycling again. And well, after riding like 70, 80 kilometers on the bicycle, well, your muscles have to have to start growing a little, so. I'm actually replacing fat with muscle, which is, I think, the proper way to go. Lost like seven kilos and then my weight just stopped. On the other hand, I can eat whatever I want. It's just enough to go cycling for like four hours. Come back extremely tired. And... 
and you know. Uh, one IFPV. Uh, this is a design by the Rotor Simo. Rotor Simo is uh, one of the viewers of this channel. He drops into to this stream from time to time. He's also my patron. Uh, after one of the streams, we started talking about this about this topic that he had an interesting idea. Blah 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 blah, and uh, at the result, like. Uh, he sent me ST he sent me the XF files. I found uh, uh, Adam, Adam Bure from Poland, uh, to mail me this frame. I got this uh, like yesterday only, I think. And uh, now I'm assembling this thing. Why? Because I think it's uh, like you see, it's an interesting topic. It's an interesting design. And uh, recently, I'm one more time in the mood for building stuff. Uh, so I'm building stuff. And this time uh, I'm building this interesting frame. Uh, hello, Magdus. Nice to see you around. I really wonder if I, if my optimistic approach and optimistic thoughts about able to fit the uh, vista on this on this frame will actually work. Because I don't like tight builds. Because tight builds uh, require you to be very careful with the dimensions. And I'm honestly kind of like not sure. But we will know, I suppose, short enough. Brandon Beans. Hey, man. Don't worry. You're not that much late. <laughs> you know what? One IPV? One IPV? You're a genius. Man, you're a genius. I was so obsessed with the mounting holes for the Vista that I absolutely completely forgot that, yeah, I can mount it whatever I want. <laughs> Man, you're a genius. Uh, so we know how I'm gonna gain like one or, one or two millimeters to be able to fit the Vista in this build. I still have no idea which build I'm going to cannibalize. Um, but maybe Y4 or maybe Swordfish. And my problem with the airplanes is that I'm really not flying that much. Uh, and uh, since I got the Penguin, I think I will be using Penguin slightly more often than the swordfish because the penguin is just uh, so much smaller uh, and lighter and like easier to travel with airplane so that's that maybe i will cannibalize uh the swordfish after all unless unless i will finally retire this build uh the y4 yeah it's cool and I still have to record a video about this build. Uh, I have some materials, but not the full video. And then I will be just able to take the Vista from this. And I think... I honestly do think that might be the best idea. That will just give me probably the motivation to uh, record some, some videos next week. Hopefully. Now... Uh, let's start thinking about how to put the stack on this thing because we will, and this is a fact, this is not, I'm thinking we will have to put some, we will have to raise the stack a little. Hmm, how many plastic M2 nuts I have? Not too many, to be honest. Definitely not too many. This is even plastic or metal? No, this is even self-locking metal. <laughs> Ay, pavo, pavo. Hmm. I think this one is plastic. Yeah. So we will do it like that. Mm -hmm. 
I will have to buy some plastic and tools. Because the height of the of the of the frame is not a problem because uh, I'm using my own standoffs and those are I think 25 millimeters. There should be plenty of space uh, for anything, so I don't really have to be worried too much about the height of the whole stack. My only limitation will my, ma my major limitation will be length of the screws but i think it should be fine i have a feeling it should be it will be fine still how much space do i need uh, yeah i need a lot of space three uh, Okay, let's see if those rubber grommets, but no, I cannot use those grommets. They have to go on top. Hmm. A challenge. And this is absolutely a challenge right now. Because I cannot go with metal M2 nuts. This is metal or plastic? Nylon, okay. So this is nylon. How high this thing should be? I think I will have to use three nuts as the spacer. Yeah, I think I will have to use three nuts. Exactly. Or maybe even two nuts would be enough. No, two nuts will be enough. I don't have to go with three nuts after all. It's always a good idea to have some kind of the spacing uh, between the carbon and everything that uh, transmits electricity. After all, let's be honest, carbon fiber is not an insulator. It's it kind of it actually transfers electricity quite nicely, and you don't want to have too many of the short circuits <laughs> on your build. Uh, Dan asks, would I say the Woxnail avatar is better than Vista? Um, this is a very this is a very tricky question because we would have to first define what does it mean better? What's our definition of better? Because um, we do have to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. And when you say which one is better, you kind of have to give much more context into that. Because what do you define as the better? What are your criteria uh, for that something is better? I decided to stay with the DGIs. Why I decided to stay with the DGIs? Mostly because I have so much DJI stuff that for me migration from Excuse me. For me, the migration from the DJI to Woxnail would just not be economically viable thing. Like, no, too many of that. Uh, because if I would, I don't want to have two systems. And by the way, I'm, I know I'm, 
I'm showing you this thing all the time. But uh, one more time, let me show you something. I'm doing this right now. So, because I'm doing this right now, it's like you have. I had no idea the windows are so expensive. I honestly had no idea the windows are so fucking expensive. When we had, we got the first quotation, uh, first offer for the do windows, and there are not that many windows uh, in this house after all. Maybe besides this this area over here, when we have three by two, three by two and a half uh, sliding doors, I was like, "What the fuck? Not a chance." <laughs> So, um, so not spending a lot of stuff, a lot of money on on drones is most probably the the best the best way for me to be able to finish this project and be able to to build the house. Because oh man, I I, I kind of like got used to the prices of the construction, like the heavy construction that uh, that we are having right now. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, I I was prepared that I'm gonna pay a shitload of money for for the company to to build this um, this house, including the roof. But then when I'm going into like the, even the problem of the roof insulation, how much I will have to pay, even assuming that I will be doing uh, half of the work by myself. I'm, I'm technically capable of doing that. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> Doors, windows, everything everywhere. So so me not spending too much cash on, on, on hobbies is actually a good thing. Run Linux. <laughs> yeah, can you live in a Linux? I don't think so. Yeah. Blizzard FPV, having issues with failed serial port on Hummingbird F4 Pro, and my expertise with computers is usually using the Claw Hammer. <laughs> um, but what exactly is happening? What's going on, man? What are the exact symptoms? Uh, and, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, because the fact that you are having a problem kind of does not... <coughs> that does not give us uh, a lot of information, because this means that... Anything can be go can go can be wrong. Without really like going into any specifics. Okay, okay, okay. Nice. So ESC will stay like this. ESC will stay like this. We will move Vista a few millimeters to the back with the double sided tape. Mm, AFGG, uh, talk with Rotor Simo. Uh, uh, he might like make this link slightly longer uh, because, like, really, like three millimeters longer uh, would be a good idea. But this is this is heavy. This is heavy comparing to, uh, let's say, the the function that uh, this thing runs. So maybe. Maybe actually having something different might be also a good good idea. To bet I do not have any extra nylon M2 I will have to order nylon M2 nuts because I'm recently I'm more building more and more Two in three inches than five inches, and that means I need more and more of those. So yeah, but that will come later. Okay, so this one, this thing will go like this. This thing will go like this and like this. Then we will install the, or maybe I should go below and then go like this. Yeah, okay, it will be fine. And then we will catch it from the top with metal M2s. And the stack will be more or less in place. I wonder if I need this crap. Do I need it? 
Um, I don't, honestly, I don't think so. I think we will just remove it. I will also probably do something stupid. And I will uh, not. I don't want to cut the wires uh, for the motors. I just don't want to do it. The reason is quite simple. I most probably I will want to reuse those uh, motors later on something different. And as the result, I just don't wanna. That's that's. I don't want to elongate them longer. So I will just make a crazy soldering. Boys and girls don't do it at home. Because it's usually a bad idea. But I just want to have longer wires. Yeah. Okay, but okay. But okay, but okay, but okay, but okay. It will be fine. Okay. Mm. Um, done. To formulate it better, do I think Walk Snail has at least comparable penetration and image quality as Vista? I think it has better image quality than Vista. It has the worst penetration or actually i don't like the the word penetration as we are using right now in the fpv hobby fpv hobby because what we are calling penetration is not really penetration because penetration as itself is only the property of the uh, of the of, of the of the radio radio wave it has nothing to do with what's happening about that but uh i i think that if what you want is the better ability to fly in the poor RF conditions, I think the Vista is better. However, I also think that uh, Walksnail has the better image quality. That's that's how I see uh, this topic. So so that's that. Um, Flying behind thick patches of trees, Vista. Flying on the open field, walk snail. That's my opinion on the topic. Uh, first of all, the walk snail gives you basically zero warning that you are going uh, out of range. It's just you have a perfect, almost perfect uh, view and then drops to black and you see squat. So that's the problem with the walk snail. But like I mentioned, um, I like the image from the walk snail much better than I like from the Vista. Uh, it's not maybe always about the resolution, etc. A lot of that is connected with uh, colors, because just I think just the colors are nicer on the walk snail. Uh, but overall, I think the the image quality is better on the on the walk snail than on the DJI, not only Vista, because I'm personally I'm not that much uh, into the the quality of the O3. It's better, but it's like the difference is not that big if you ask me. So, so that's that. So, uh, Blizzard FPV. Uh, I was able to plug in the FC to the computer I used uh, to load uh, into Betaflight. Now I just get a failed serial port. I download the new Betaflight and try the immersion RC uh, fix. No go. Uh, first question is, which version of Windows do you use? Because if you use uh, Windows 11, maybe even Windows 10. I'm not sure about the Windows 10 though, but I think it's also true. You don't need any extra drivers. All the drivers uh, are come uh, shipped with the... Hmm, not enough space. All the drivers you require come shipped with the Windows itself. So this is... Windows becomes just like Linux. All the drivers are inside. 
So that's that. Mm, what you can try to do to figure out what's wrong. First of all, use a different USB cable. And I'm serious about that. Uh, the cables are very often the reason of the of the problems uh, that you like think it's something else. So first of all, try different uh, USB cable, plug into a different USB port, and in general change everything. Then um, open the in the Windows there is the device manager and uh, see which kind of the driver you have over there. Maybe it just... the driver got somehow damaged, then you can uh, reinstall the driver to reuse it. Sometimes I had this problem. There is the serial port enumeration problem. Uh, that means that two devices are having the same serial port uh, number assigned. Uh, one more time, disabling and enabling the device in the device manager uh, is the way to go to, to solve this, uh, this issue. We don't know yet what's causing this problem. I hate this soldering job. It's awful. What, what the fuck have I done? It's honestly awful. absolutely awful soldering no i have to remove it because but first blizzard fpv let me exactly show you what i have in mind um uh, Let me show you what... Uh, I have Windows 11, so it might be slightly different than uh, in your case. Uh, let's open settings. Uh, in the settings, we will have to go into the... Informations. Uh, then Device Manager. Like... For example, I have unknown device. I have no idea what this unknown device is, by the way. No idea what this, this device is. Uh, whatever. And I have no driver for... The, okay, but this is not... Here, in the COM ports. Mm, from time to time, there might be, for example, uh, let, let me show you something. Uh, let me just plug in the flight controller, any flight controller I, I have. So, if I plug in the flight controller, I have the new USB, new USB serial device. Uh, check uh, what is assigned in the properties. Uh, and it should be just uh, standard Microsoft. Uh, if uh, there's something wrong with the driver, you can always uninstall device, install device again. And from time to time, you might get a conflict that you will have two devices with the same COM number. Uh, if so, remove both devices and uh, then uh, it should kind of fix itself. Or maybe you just have uh, running software that is locking the serial port. For example, the Ultimaker Cura. If you have Ultimaker Cura running, you will not connect to uh, Betaflight or INAF or anything configurator because this device, for unknown reason, uh, absolutely hogs the, the serial port. Damn. Okay, I have to rethink my soldering strategy on that, because what I did was absolutely abysmal, and I don't accept the crappy soldering like that. We will have to figure something better, a better way to do it. Yeah, we will just go like that. Standard soldering pattern.
one no this this wire require This wire is flat, so we kind of have to at least a little fix it. Okay, so that's the second one. And that's the third one. And that also means that the ugly front motors are in place. I don't like what I did over here. I absolutely don't. But if we will put the wires behind this, somehow like here, blah, blah, blah. It will be ugly, but this is an experimental quad. It doesn't have to be pretty. I allow myself not to build a pretty quad. Especially that maybe not all, but <laughs> half of the components on this quad are actually used. And I would most probably want to reuse majority of those components or most probably a completely different build. So, you know. Ugly. Ugly. I don't like. I don't like what I'm doing over here with those soldering joints. If I would be soldering for a living, I would have to fire myself. But I don't. Okay. And uh, okay, ugly. <laughs> oh man, it's so ugly. Ay, 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 ay. That it will be fine. <laughs> it will be fine. Let's put front standoffs uh, to give some of the shape to this uh, contraption. And yeah, <laughs> it will be fine. Uh, one IFPV, how about braiding the wires? Um, this is not uh, best idea to braid the wires, especially when you make the wires longer. Uh, because when you braid the wires, you kind of increase the chance. Ugly, but it will be fine. You kind of increase the chance that the back EMF uh, on the phase, de phase detection will be wrongly propagated between uh, the phases. So not the best idea ever. You should try whatever you can to have as little as possible interaction between the wires. And unfortunately braiding them uh, is not really doing that. Um, it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. I will show you something. I will show you something because I have a nice idea. Let's use some gaffer tape and let me show you what my idea is. We will use the gaffer's tape to mount it like this. Okay. Lovely. Perfetto. Terry Freeze out of focus, but I don't think I'm out of focus. I think 
I'm in focus, at least my camera says that uh, it's in focus. Uh, maybe it's just the quality of the YouTube stream. Who knows, but everything looks more or less fine on my side. That's all I can, I can say. But perfect. Hmm. I can go, okay, maybe I will increase slightly. Okay, let's do something like this. Let's do something like this. I increased slightly the uh, aperture. So the depth of field should be slightly bigger. And now for the dangling wires, one more time. Not pretty, but works. Um, looks absolutely abysmal. <laughs> <laughs> looks absolutely abysmal. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Looks absolutely abysmal. But whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Let me fix those soldering points. points. Let's put... Uh, new solder on it okay and because i still would like to have some extra space uh, between the vista which i know i will move to the back and the light controller stack I will still want to solder the wires vertically or at least and at the angle or something. Like this. Ugly. Really, really, really ugly. Yeah, it will be fun. Okay, this wire soldered and then let me still, I still have to replace the solder of the wires because it was relatively hard to work with that. And okay. So that does it. Slightly shorter, slightly shorter, slightly shorter, and let's solder the last remaining wires. And then we will do the smoke test, if I have not messed up anything. Hmm. 
I should have used a bigger soldering tip. This one is definitely too small for even for soldering those small uh, motor wires. Okay, and the last one. And the last one, and then we do the smoke test. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, ugly soldering. Just a minute, guys. I will answer the questions in the chat in just a minute. I only have to find the wire to make the smoke test. Okay, now we're talking. Now let me connect to the PSU and let's see what the PSU, I'm using the Toolkit RC P200 for that. What will happen if I will connect myself? Uh, limit 1.5 voltage 16 volts on. Okay. And let's go. Do -do 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 -do. No smoke. Uh, ESCs are beeping. That's kind of expected. And this is fine. Let me start enough configurator because i think i have enough installed over there i think beep, 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 beep. yeah it's enough so quickly let's disable gps because this thing will have no gps browsed and also let me disable the magnetometer because it's none. And now we will have a minute to answer some questions. Uh, first of all, Blizzard FPV, thank you very much for the super nice five Canadian dollars donation. Canada, I have a lot of viewers from Canada, you know? I have no idea, but I'm quite popular in Canada. At least uh, Canucks are not afraid to say that they are from Canada, so I know that they are from Canada. <laughs> So that's that. Uh, it looks fine. Yeah. Uh, Blizzard FPV, uh, this frame you can put battery whenever you want. Like, honestly, like, whatever. Uh, Chris Rosser, OMG, the vibrations. OMG, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, honestly, um, frame resonance is uh, very important. Yes, frame resonance is very important, but uh, frame resonance uh, gets much more important when you grow higher with the size of the frame. Uh, because uh, with higher frames, longer beams between uh, points, uh, you also get lower uh, resonance frequencies. And that means that those frequencies kind of are going below 100 hertz when it's super hard to filter them out. 
and then if you filter them out you lose the performance in flight yes of course the whole frame will be still vibrating on those relatively high frequencies but the lower the frequency it's harder to get this read from getting fed into the gyro and like increasing the the amplitude in the first place so so that's that mm. honestly if the frame is not that much stiff uh, sorry that much wobbly personally I don't really care. Mm, throw away. Uh, how do I find FC that will work for the quad config plus two servos in INAV? I tried one with eight output, but servos aren't getting mapped. Yeah, that's kind of the bummer, right? Mm, that's kind of the bummer. Uh, by the way, I'm playing with the uh, satellite uh, tracker right now. I have a satellite receiver based on ESP32 setup right now at my home. And uh, I even got five packets from outer space. Wow. If we go... Um, not the 9 gag. Uh, if we go into the GitHub... I think there is a wiki page generated uh, that uh, has this kind of the information, but I'm not 100% sure. So, no, 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 no. Uh, not board, uh, but docs. Mm. Navigation, spectrum telemetry, boards. No, this is outdated, so not really Matex, no. But what we can do, we can go to the wiki and then try to find blinking lights, Bluetooth setup, boards, boards, targets, and PWM allocation. Uh, this is automatically generated by the, uh, by the source code. And uh, you can see which uh, target a switch assignment on which pin so you just like find something that has whatever you want you can get the same information from the source code itself it's pretty simple uh, but this is kind of probably simpler so for example mamba f722 2022a has motor 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 servo 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 uh, the same for the version b and so on and so on and so on so it's kind of you have everything that that you want over there and it it, it should be fine then um, brandon beans i'm looking for the flight uh, lock right now where the pilot is getting periods of your drift in the lock item vanishes and contributes nothing for pizzum for periods as long as two seconds um that's interesting mm, is there a chance that maybe you are oversaturating the motors i mean that the motors are working really 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 hard because then the there is possibility in the in the in the in the pid controller to zero the item but uh, well you know what without having the lock it's almost impossible to say mm, ah in beta flight um Oh, in beta flight. I think they do not have the limiting uh, like that. The lock. Uh, that's only the lock. Only the lock and code analysis might answer this question because I'm not aware of anything that uh, might cause this. I mean, it shouldn't. At least okay, if the pilot is doing a lot of your maneuvers, then maybe but um, hard to say uh woo -woo -woo fpv how i'm gonna fly this thing at night i'm not gonna fly this thing at night <laughs> that's uh, that's the thing mm, tpa too high mm, i don't think it's a tpa because tpa is not scaling item Mm, TPA only scales uh, the P term and the D term. So air mode is off. Lol. Always enable air mode. Always. It should air mode should be enabled by default, and there should be. You should disable this only in very specific reasons, and only if you're really sure that you want to, and not like so. Enable the air mode. 
and yeah let's test the motor ears if they are spinning and that will be probably all for today and i would have to say it was almost uh, almost a success today's yes okay motor works motor works motor works all the motors are operational uh, even with the d-shot protocol which is true fantastic outstanding kudos for me uh, so that means we can shut down uh, this thing right now success we have a great success gents uh, we have a great success the drone is somehow operational uh, not fully but somehow we will still have to somehow like um Hmm. And this crap over here. This crap over here, and we will most probably put this. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm, not pretty. Not pretty, but guess what? It will be fun. So, looks like it's operational. Uh, of course, uh, the top plate will go like this. This will go like this. This will go like this. And there really should be enough of the space in the back to fit the Vista somehow over there yeah it will fly <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure this thing will fly after all okay um that will be i will still have one question hornet uh, have you ever tried making my own fc board um no not really um imagine that i'm not really that good with electronics uh, this is not really my major, and uh, believe it or not, it's not really that simple to make the... Uh, I know enough of the electronics to know that designing a good hardware is not that simple as it looks like. It's not only about placing some place elements like randomly on the board, it's also like like there's a lot of like capacitance uh, of the of everything. I, this is not my major. I honestly don't don't want to waste my time on that. Because, well, I have more interesting stuff to do. Um, I Second part of your question, what would I change in the existing designs? Um, there, I have not found yet a perfect board for me. I have found quite a lot of good boards but nothing that is really like 100% fantastic. Back in the days when we still had the separate ESCs, uh, the Matek F722 SE, uh, the one with the integrated PDB, that was fantastic flight controller. But then we went into four in ones and things changed. I'm using right now a mixture of um, different flight controllers. Um, and <laughs> None of them is perfect. None of them is perfect. Uh, on the other hand, I'm not sure if this is uh, so simple to make any of those perfect. Uh, like I have in two builds, I have the Matek F722, Matek F H743 light, I think, or slim. Good, good board can be improved. I have KQT87, good board can be improved. I have uh, KQT 87 Mini, good board can be improved, etc, etc, etc. So, if any flight controller manufacturer would like to cooperate with me in making the best possible flight controller out there, I'm open for cooperation. I will tell everyone, copy this design, but change this. Copy this design, 
but change this, etc., 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 etc. But I'm too small of the of the YouTuber, so I don't think uh, this will ever actually happen. And uh, and that's that. Peter Rot, uh, hello. Uh, got off work earlier today. Unfortunately, we are slowly ending the stream, so so you know. Um, uh, grumpy old nerd cannot find the motivation to work on the mini drugs. Yeah, I'm working on this because I have this motivation. It's really like, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. Yeah. Uh, if you will master the art, let's talk. Let's talk. Who knows? But still, on the other hand, maybe I should ask some of my contacts. Would you like to make the best possible flight controller? Because I have a few suggestions here and there. Anyhow, thank you very much for watching. Uh, happy flying and stuff. Uh, probably this Saturday we're gonna have a regular Saturday uh, live, live stream. Uh, probably I will be able to share my first thoughts about the DJI Osmo Action 4. Uh, I cannot wait. Uh, DHL unfortunately failed to deliver the package uh, today but uh, hopefully they should be able to deliver the packet tomorrow um and i will find uh, one or two topics for for the saturday as well so um like always thank you very much for watching I, this was too much of the beer thank you very much for watching this was the fp university i'm pavel spichalski and like always happy flying <laughs> i like this line i like this line happy flying i like i like, I like what i can what, what, i like how i copied it because it's a copy of one of my favorite uh, youtubers which is Harris Heller uh, right now known as Senpai Gaming and he always ends with happy streaming so I yeah kind of okay happy flying happy flying looks good so so have a nice Thursday because I know it's already Thursday uh, Tasmania or New Zealand Tasmania I think Tasmania anyhow until the next one. Ciao.